So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to share my screen. Um, I guess it's like hard to know, like you can't talk to people. Like I'd want to know, you know, who here is completely brand new and needs help, like just getting set up, getting Inkscape running, that kind of thing. Um, so I'm just going to assume everybody watching has Inkscape. So I'll make that assumption. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to screen share. Oops, that's not screen share. This is screen share. Um, I hope this works. Hi, guys. Hi. So technically, I didn't finish up the thing, but I felt like I wanted to, to join the call here to to populate it a little bit more. I'm listening, and okay. I'm, I'm going to be a part of the conversation. I just need to get gather all of the FAST accounts to to do badges. I'm going to award them later. I just have to go through the chat. So I'm here. So. All right. <laughs> All right. Thank you for uh, saving me from being very awkward. Um, so, all right. So we have two wallpapers we got to do. And the background here is that um, we're trying to do two release wallpapers at the same time so we can get ahead of it so that moving forward, we don't block any releases, not that we ever have, although we've been accused of doing so. Um, but it kind of, it, it means, it just means less stress for everybody and better testing on the wallpaper and that sort of thing. So we're gonna try to get ahead of it. So we're doing two at once and F33, um, I believe it's Walter Lincoln Hawkins. And this is the one we have a lot of mockups for um, using telephone poles. And I think, oh, um, it looks like Madeline didn't post hers. So let me, hers is in her blog. I don't know if you guys have seen her um, blog on Planet Fedora. Did this, why is this not, awesome bars not being awesome. Yeah, okay, so let me see if I can get her sketches here. And you guys can see this, right? I'm not like talking to a black hole. Yeah. It's like one of like four things on the screen, but yep, I can see it. It's more. Oh, I wonder if I holes. can I make it bigger? Oh, here. I think I think we have the ability to do that. Oh, I think we have to do it independently that... on our side. So like oh, if I okay. click on your so... shared, yeah, yeah. If I double click on your shared screen, then it makes it larger and it puts everybody else to the bottom. Okay, cool. Yeah, so everyone double click. Oh my gosh, and then it does that weird thing. Cool. All right. So yeah, I, I kind of gave Madeline a little bit of the background of like, if it's not blue, there's drama. So you see, <laughs> I know suggesting more than blue is controversial. Um, but like this was this was like her sketch. Um, and I think this, she's playing with transparencies like panes of glass. Um, I think that was thinking about the, um, the other one, F34, which is Oob Iwerks, whose name I'm probably butchering, um, but he's the guy who invented the multiplane camera. Um, so I think that that's where she was going with this one. Um, but this one now, so okay, I I'm gonna I'm gonna be blunt here. All right, nobody nobody get your feelings hurt. I think these are awesome. I think I I love how this one like the lines pop out of the background. That makes it a little bit more surreal, a little bit more abstract. I find that super interesting. Um, when it's just like a telephone pole and lines, it, it just, it feels, um, there's like this terrible movie that came out in the nineties. I don't remember the name of the movie, but it was like this guy going to art school and he had like, he had a thing where he'd like just make nouns. So it just, it makes me think of like, this is just like a noun telephone pole. Do you know what I mean? Like it needs a little bit more something. So like out of these, my favorite mock-up is this one because you have the poles almost like coming out of the background. It, it makes me think of, um, oh, what's her name? The the crazy chick, um, the bad guy chick, what's her name? Um, um, Billie Eilish. Eilish. Yes, B Billie Eilish. Mm -hmm. When the beginning of the music video and she like, there's like a yellow thing and she just like cracks it open and like comes out of it. it this is what it makes me think of. It's like a like a blue wall and it's just like coming out. It just, it, it's interesting. Like you're thinking about, well, well why, why is that coming out of the wall? It, it's kind of cool. So I like that part of it. Um, one of the things conceptually that I was thinking about with this thing was um, almost like the, the entire project that this inventor worked on 
involved connecting rural communities that never had a connection before, like they never had the ability to call the rest of the country or whatnot. So, you know, you could even do something more abstract that had some sort of like networking or like bringing dots together or just any sort of like visual that shows things that were like disconnected kind of flowing together. So, I mean, just very abstract concept there. Like that's kind of my initial. So I wasn't expecting anything quite so literal as like telephone poles, but again, like this one is kind of cool because it, it has that like surreal edge to it. Um, and let me think, what else was I going to point out about this? All right. So there was a question about, um, and let me, can I hide my share? Um, no. Go away, share. There we go. Okay. So then there was a question in the ticket about um, how does this time of day wallpaper thing work? Um, so the way the time of day wallpaper thing works is kind of not as exciting as it sounds like it could be. It's basically like you have four layers in GIMP and you just sort of like blend between two layers by kind of gradually decreasing the opacity of one. So if objects move from one frame to another frame to another frame, I don't think it's going to work too well because then you're going to have this thing where it's sort of a ghost in both positions. And then, so it, it kind of, I like the time of day idea, but I think that it's not going to look right in between the, you know, like in the center point between two of the, I don't know, nodes or right. whatever, tweening you, you, points. You don't want to have multiple shadows at the same time. I, right. If you were to, if you were to, and I think I was just kind of playing with Blender, I was like, oh, I could probably build a telephone pole and learn this program a little bit better. Um, right, right. And I think if, uh, and the reason about the time of day is I was just thinking about that. If you abstract it even more, I remember there was something from Mindshare maybe like a year or two ago that had to do with the concept of like connecting nodes, sort of like that broaden ability. It might be possible to do something that's like a, a top down kind of like those shots of planet earth where you have cities you know light up you might be able to have something that's a nice fade between like where there are points of light maybe Ooh. i don't know i don't know I like exactly that. what that would look like but like conceptually that might be a thing that would aid you know in that kind of like blend mode because i really wasn't sure how that worked well one thing i think that that's an awesome idea and i think that um like we can control the time of day, obviously. So like we can make it so that in the morning, maybe we could have it so like it's some kind of surface of a planet or something and nothing is lit up. And then like at noon, like a few lights are connected and then um, sunset, there's even more. And then at night, it's all lit up. That that might be neat. And then over time- yeah, kind of like a day progression. Yeah, exactly. And then over, but because it's like more things coming in rather than something moving, I think that'll work. It's just the one weird. Whoa. Hey, Maria, how you doing? <laughs> um, I think the one weird transition is going to be the fully lit night to dawn. That might be a little freaky, but whatever. <laughs> I think it's all right. I mean, how many people are awake then anyway? Maybe me, but I don't know many other people awake and staring at their desktop <laughs> yeah that's a, yeah at night i'm usually on the phone so but yeah so that's that's actually kind of a cool idea i love that it's a really cool concept and it uses the time of day too so then for this one we'll be thinking about sort of what i don't know like well let's let's pull up some pictures here hold on um yeah i'll share my screen again and I, I don't have to be the only one sharing my screen, I think. I think it lets you people do it too. I don't know. Do you see a share screen option? Yep. I do, yeah. Uh, okay. Okay, cool. All right. So I'm going to do Media Wiki Commons. I don't know why it's not popping up, but. I mean, that's the other thing is if it's like an Earth type thing, there's so many public domain stuff from NASA. Which is a great benefit. NASA's wonderful. Just the pitches. Let's see. Doo -doo -doo -doo. I think we want one of those ones where it like fills the frame kind of thing. Like it even could be something like this without the, the space equipment. But I don't know. What were you thinking, Kyle? 
Um, I, I, you know, I just, in some ways, I, my head was thinking even maybe more abstract than that, but, um, okay. but just, you know, like to, con to have the connecting, um, I, like, I think it's the right thing. Like I, th we're thinking the same thing, which is like those shots of the planet at night, maybe they're not even from the space station. Maybe they're from like satellite or something like that. Probably the space station, but just the difference between like the, uh, where the points of light are essentially those shots at night are like, where are their cities, you know? Um, right. but then like the progression being like possibly like a connection of like lines or something between them. And maybe the lines are dark and they like light up and they almost carry it. So it's a little less, you know, I don't know. It, it'd be one of those things where I think, you know, we'd have to, we'd have to build it or like a lot of people could build it and then we'd see what it might yeah, we like, like play with it and see how it turns out. Yeah. Oh, here it's something like. So this this kind of thing is something. Yeah. It'd be nice if they had that quality because you can see like the lines between the mm -hmm. different cities and things. But yeah, so you could kind of have it spread, you know. I, I think I think conceptually the 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 thing for me would be like like you said like more areas are lit up over time. Right. It, it spreads or it grows or it you know expands. And do we want it to be Earth or do we want to make it? more abstract, like no recognizable continents or anything like that. I think it should be abstract. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm wondering well, if there's any, like, I, I, you know, everybody loves that one fedora wallpaper where it's the sound wave and it's the trees. So I'm like wondering if there's something we could do like that, where like it's abstract, but there's some meaning to the shapes that we work into it. Yeah. Like a, like a hidden kind of nugget. Yeah. What about some of the graphs Matthew had in his state of Fedora talk? So I didn't see that. Um, <laughs> That's okay. I could just ask him for the slides. I think I have access to them. Hold on. <laughs> okay. That would be cool. Cause yeah, um, I didn't have a babysitter yesterday cause it was her high school graduation. Her high school graduation that still happened even though hours before the mayor banned outdoor gatherings of over 50 people or not the mayor, the governor. <laughs> Yeah. So we live in interesting times. I know it's crazy. Um, I do have a stupid and silly question because I have been away from the keyboard for so long <laughs> that everything. Nothing is stupid silly. or silly. <laughs> no, it's all good. So, two questions. I was checking the, the ticket, and uh, the new ideas come from a letter. So the letter, then you just select an inventor and go right, from right, it. right, okay. yeah. And uh, our inventor was H, and it's um, yeah. it's Walter Hawkins who invented um, he invented a type of polymer. He's like some kind of chemist, and he invented some type of polymer okay. that enabled them to run f telephone lines much further than before. So he helped connect rural communities. So that would be that would be the the one that we are supposed to use, right? Yeah, yeah, Hawking's oh, the right. yeah. yeah. And then we're that also doing F thirty four at the same time. So F thirty four we could talk about too. Here, let me pop that up. So I can share my screen if you guys can see it. Yeah. Oh, yep, yep, yep. Here's one of the graphs that Matthew has in his talk i mean i see here we could just do like 2019 through 2020 or something like that probably just isolate some of it or not there's yeah. fedora magazine page views by year ask fedora stats let's see what else there is here and uh are these are these um, downloads? Yeah, I think, I think so. He, it's two methods. Yeah, I th yeah, yeah. Okay. There's that I think one of the things, because I think, yeah, I think pulling it from data would be really interesting. And all of you would probably have a better idea of kind of like. This one's the, nice. Yeah. Well, um, I could totally see breaking those up into like a Pangea split. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. 
Uh, this one's more interesting. Ages of Fedora, unique IP addresses seen per daily release from 2007. I mean, you could also treat that broad shape as like a continent, right? Like a zoomed in portion of a continent if you wanted to from the sky. Yeah. Right, right. I like that too. So, so like it's not, I think the one thing that kind of I'm wondering about is the the thing with the kind of like hidden fedora seemed to be like really, I'm assuming, and like, correct me if I'm wrong, is that people kind of like went, oh, like really? And then could kind of like place it. And it was so simple. It didn't need much of an explanation. It was just like a sound wave of, of the, the, the name of the distribution. Hello. I wonder if there's something Hi. else that would be like pretty simple like that. I'm, and I'm not sure, it, I'm not saying it's not data. I'm just wondering like that seemed that seemed to be maybe like a quick pathway for people into kind of it. Right. I think yeah, I like trying this to one's the most interesting. Or this one. You that can one also looks like it's on fire. <laughs> yeah. We like you this could one also better. probably do something with like the raw the raw data too. You might you might be able to like I don't know, like like plot plot where the points of light are based on like some sort of like X Y coordinate based on the actual numbers of the data. I don't know if that would look interesting. Should I not. get Matthew to share uh, with us how he made those? Yeah. Well, hold on. I I have um I have something to share with you guys. One second. Okay. Um, She's got to look. <laughs> All right. Hold on. Come on. Is it going to let me share? Uh oh. Hold on. Firefox is like saying no. Oop. Say yes, Firefox. Okay. I think it'll let me do it now. Yeah. I like how, like, it's like, remember this decision and then, like, it forgets. <laughs> okay. Can you see this? Yep. Mm hmm. Yeah. So, like, I was thinking, you know, this is like the. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> I mean, we could actually do this, but my thinking was that it's like ages of Fedora. I was thinking like each version of Fedora could have like a little continent shape and it sized relative to how many downloads it had. So we could sort of work in like what was what the largest one is going to be like the most um, the most popular Fedora release. But I think that might be neat. And maybe um, somehow we could take the release number of each continent and make that apply to how many lights it has or 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 we could do the number of lights um represent the downloads which actually might be a better scale so like you know if there was like three thousand downloads then we can make it so that there's three thousand points of light on that continent and maybe maybe the continent shapes could have some relation to the release number like they could roughly you know look like the number not really though i don't know that's one idea It's like kind of, yeah, and it's kind of like if you can kind of vaguely tell if somebody told you, but you couldn't tell right away that the continent shapes were numbers. I think that right. makes it simple and easy to grok. And then also the relationship between the number of downloads and the number of lights, I think it's also pretty simple to grok. So I think yeah. that could be a good way to do it. Yeah. Real quick, I just want to introduce Samara to the call. I'm sure you guys all know her name but maybe haven't met her in person. This is uh, the design outreachy intern that I've been working with. Nismo, this is like your grand mentee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I saw I saw a part of your Inkscape talk yesterday. That went really well. Very good. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to interrupt because I don't think she's met many of us in person yet. Yeah. Cool. I like the idea, Ms. Mo. I'm just curious, like, who is taking, like, is one person going at this and there's going to make some iterations and we'll, like, be like, oh, we like this? Or are we all kind of going at it? What, what's the plan? We're kind of all going at it. And I, I think that's, I think that's okay. We're just at that stage. Oh, like, sure, sure. over time, I think, you know, you have the brainstorming just as many things as possible and then you narrow it down and then whatever. So oh, wow. I'm not, I'm not too worried about that. Although, should we I take some our, notes and put them um, on the ticket? Yeah, meeting? yeah, definitely. 
Um, yeah, and I guess we need a design for beta by the 18th, which is in 10 days. Oh, we got uh, this. <laughs> yeah, so, all right. No, we're fine. Um, so hold on, so I'm gonna, I'll, I'll write some notes here and I can transcribe them into the ticket. So yeah. like, um, so F33, H is Hawking's, okay. So what we're thinking about doing is sort of like a uh, world from space view. And then it's gonna be, and how many releases were on that chart? I don't remember. Let's see. Do we wanna do the same or do we wanna just say seven continents? Cause it, it starts at F6. Okay. Um, but before that there's rawhide. Okay. <laughs> So, and it probably goes up to 32? 32. It's separated kind of by um, like two or three at a time. Not sure exactly why, but we're, we're okay. going to I'm going to have to get that info from Matthew. I'm going to message him right okay. now. Yeah. Okay. Talk about yeah, the, if he the could one pop that in. goes roughly up. Not the one that looks like fire, but oh. the one that kind of scaled. Is that the one we're talking about? Yes. I wonder if he could okay. pop in. There seem to be like... I don't remember like seven or eight colors that looked like they were on it. Which is about, I would say that's like a nice sweet spot in terms of like number of continents. So, yeah. There you go. But if there's more than one release per continent, then that makes doing it in the shape of the number a little difficult. So I'm wondering if we can split the data up different. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah. So it's like 29 to 32. Yeah. Yeah, you could do a subset or you could group them together. Um, yeah. You could just do the last number of releases. Now, why is F20 split out on its own? Hmm. Well, anyway, so we'll have to figure out like shape of continents. How do we figure that out? And it, we could just do it random too, but it might be nice for the shape to have a meaning. Maybe something to do with the numbers. Do it like a like a watching the world from the outside. And then you can use use that part of the graphic as a you know just a partial side a side view of the continent, so you don't have to render all of it. Something mm -hmm. like this. So, what, do you mean? Um, I guess I'm not. I'm, I'm having a hard time visualizing that. Can you kind of say it another way? Yeah. Oh, let me look. All right, you guys, I'm going to take a quick pause and stop in uh, the Fedora bingo and then I'll, or the CP bingo, and I'll be back. Okay. All right, see you in a minute. Okay. I really like this picture, actually. I love, like, this setup of this image. Let me just do it on the share. Yeah, that looks great. That's, I think, like, closer to what was in my mind, except probably the was dropped out of the earth, but that looks, that looks awesome. That way you can only use that part of the graphic and then you don't have to do all of it. Because if you're going to do several ones, then it's going to take more time and then you will have to divide where do you want to have the dots representing the download and all that. But, and if you want to make transitions, which is usually complicated, but it takes a lot of time, but it, you know, this is an idea Then you can make it, uh, have more lights depending on the on the day, on the time, something like that. And I think that we had that several years ago. Okay, I, I really, I really like this angle, and I love how you can like see the atmosphere and like the the background. I think that's really nice. I think that'll be a good way to go. And I think what we could do is like do something where yeah, it's just like a landmass, and so it doesn't have to be like islands or anything like big continent islands and what we could do is figure out where we're just going to map out where each kind of release lives. And if, you know, we have the concern that like, well, this block of data applies to 21, 22, 23, 24, we could probably just position them next to each other, like whatever. And then, so the number of downloads, the lights would be spread out against the one and they'd be like together. And maybe we could do them in order for the viewer. So like we'd start with the lowest release in the lower left and then kind of towards the upper right move to like the higher numbered releases. Um, yeah. And you can use each, each one of the sections as cities kind of reference. Yeah. 
the divisions yeah. can be roads and, and that will simplify. Maybe some just randomize to, to trace some lines in between them. That will do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for wallpaper usage, I will use some, I mean, the, the lights should not be that bright because sometimes, I mean, I, I don't use anything on my desktop, you know, no folders, no icons, no anything, but I know that there is still some people that use it. So it should be not that bright, probably. It's a, it's do you think a, that this one is the nice a nice mix of brightness or do you think it's too high contrast? For me, it's still too high. But okay. it, I mean, it, it's just a couple of dots down. It, it shouldn't be that hard to, to have it less contrast. Yeah. Uh, but it's okay. still a nice, really nice uh, color palette. And I'm sure that you, we can easily just use the fedora colors for it. I mean, it's just gorgeous. Yeah. Okay, cool. I'm loving this idea. Um, and it has like a deep concept behind it too, which I think is really cool. Yeah. Connect everyone in the world. Right, right. And you kind of get that too, just looking at it, like you get the, the thought about connection and everybody being together. Yeah. Which is and also then, sort of a nice theme given the Rona times we're in, right? <laughs> exactly. And when it's downloads, uh, the data's from Fedora releases, then it kind of proves that Fedora did this over time as well. Right, right. Okay. Do we want to shift to 34? Sure. Okay, so 34 is I, and it's Oob Iwerks, and I'm probably butchering his name, but that's okay, because people butcher my name, so karma. Um, and let's see. Oh, this is from the actual patent artwork. Yeah, I saw this before. That's neat. Yeah, I was having a lot of fun with uh, trying to, like, recreate the, uh, the functionality of the device. Um, and obviously I just did it with the patent, but I think you could do other things. Right. Like, I think like part, part of what I thought was, would be, would be interesting is if, cause I know there's a lot of like actual cartoony type things that have been developed for Fedora over time. No, one, one of the ones that I thought of was like, um, uh, beefy miracle, but I know there are other ones like pandas and things. <laughs> You know, yeah. but like you might be able, you might be able to have like, cause I think like typically like in the foreground, there's a, there's actually like a cartoon character moving. And then those are all the background elements that are sort of like. Mimicking oh yeah. Like the, shot. I forget the name of that, but yeah. I uh, mean, it's basically the, like multi-plane. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. And so like, I, I wondered what, and again, that's kind of why I was asking about the shifting frames again, is like, you could have a character progress from one side of the screen, but obviously you'd have that blending. So but that would kind of give the illusion a little bit of like, and a granted over 24 hour period of like kind of how that product works. But I think like the layering thing is really interesting, but, th but those are just my thoughts. <laughs> okay, Paul, sorry. Oh. I got the FPL here in the chat to talk to us about this graph. He's saying that um, breaking up of the different releases was arbitrary. <laughs> so what about um, F20? What did F20 do to anybody? <laughs> I don't yeah. even like what was the thing with that I don't remember it was being in a... you know I'm a middle child man we get the worst it's not fair I'm gonna ask him why was F20 a big release was that something to do with like the cloud images because I know that was like F8 right Is raw data available too? Did you tell him our idea or no? No, he's gonna come onto video. <laughs> oh, I think he's gonna flip when he hears it because it's an awesome idea. I think he will prove as well. I think he said he had to jump onto a laptop or a different computer. Oh, okay. Yeah, the source data numbers by release, that would be perfect. <clears throat> yeah, we started talking about F34 too. Sort of our, our cartoon properties of what we have, pandas, 
Hot dogs, badgers. Because, you know, so I, he's, he's a Disney guy. Right, this is an animation. Yeah, and it's multi plane, so. I think I'm going to have to read up on what multi plane means. Hi. Hi. Hey. Um, Welcome. Okay. Uh, so, so, yeah, the um, great, the, I, I broke them down by the pattern of what was going on there. The F8 was a huge release because uh, for some reason, it, like on, on the individual graph of um, just that release, it was very, it was like twice as big as the surrounding releases in terms of um, uh, the number of users for like continuing on and on for many years. And we're not quite sure why, but it might be because of Amazon using it as a base image for a bunch of things. Um, and then never updating from that ever to our frustration. Um, then awesome. we had some growth up until the uh, Fedora 15 fiasco, um, where things like basically Fedora, almost nobody uh, went to Fedora 15. And then it took a while, like things were on the decline. And Fedora 20 is both where things leveled out and also where we uh, took a year between Fedora 20 and 21 instead of um, instead of six months. So that's what I meant by it being a big release. Like it was that whole year. And basically the pattern for each release is the numbers keep going up until we put the next one out, which caused that one to be also kind of a big spike. So I wanted to highlight it by itself. And then the green is where we started with Fedora Next. And that's where we started having Workstation Server, Cloud, separate um and then the orange was it's really kind of a continuation of that but i also um it's when we started with modularity and i wanted to see if there's any difference there really um it really seems to be just kind of continuation of the green blob green and orange are also matthew miller was the fpl um but uh, <laughs> that's a coincidence really uh, <laughs> that okay. nothing to do with the gigantic growth uh do you want to hear our idea? Uh, yes, I want to hear your idea. Okay, here, let me give you a quick rundown here. Hold on, I can share. Yeah, okay. So for F33, um, our, our um, inspiration is the scientist Walter Lincoln Hawkins. He designed a specific type of plastic polymer for telephone cable sheathing. So um, his big sort of claim to fame was he, he connected all these rural areas to the telephone network that had yeah, never been connected right. before. So there's like an obvious thing where you could like think about this is like the theme of connections and outreach and inclusion and all these kind of good things, I think, um, that are also, we were saying earlier, kind of very Rona relevant. Um, so the idea that we had, if you've ever seen this thing before. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. So we were thinking something like, cause you had like the ages of Fedora. So we were thinking like the continents of Fedora, right? And then um, because it's about connections, like one of the ways that you can see how earth is connected at night is, um, do I have it? You know, one of one of these sorts of things, but yeah. um, where's the one Tatika sent? Cause that one was really awesome. Why can't I find, oh, here it is. Okay. So we were thinking this sort of composition and you're looking at a planet, but it's not Earth, so it's not going to be like recognizable continents. Instead, it's going to be the continent of Fedora releases, and it'll go maybe left to right, starting with like the earliest release over to the later releases. And for each really individual release, we'll have the number of lights represent the number of downloads that it had, and we'll show okay. sort of like connections between them. Does that sound good? <laughs> um. Yes. Actually, um, I don't have numbers before six, so we'll have to make those up. Um, or we can just leave six out, too. I mean, there's nothing yeah, to I mean, say. Start it has to cover six. every single one. It should start at six. Um, the other thing is, like, I, I'm glad we're going up now, but I feel bad about that part in the middle where it was going down. Um, so I don't necessarily want to... I want to make sure we're not accidentally emphasizing that in the... Um, Oh, like, that's cool. That's just that's where the rainforest is, or you know, the lake or something. <laughs> Burning. I think on fire I think, part. I think I think the other thing too is we were talking about kind of having the four um, different images being part of the transition, and so we'd have four different takes where more lights showed up. So it would be like. All oh, right. That's the coolest part of the idea. 
Yeah, so like in the morning, there's no lights. And then like at noon, it starts lighting up a little bit. And then at sunset, it starts lighting up a little bit more. And then at nighttime, like midnight, it's fully lit. You know, that's with cool. the time like of day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's I mean, I, I will also point out, um, traditionally, we've done four um, because, and of course, somebody's going to be pissed off that I'm suggesting this, but that's okay. Um, we don't uh, anymore do the different aspect ratios of the wallpapers. So it used to be we do a wallpaper, the four images, and then multiply that by four. So it's 16 because of the different aspect ratios. Well, we're not doing aspect ratios anymore. We're just doing one big thing and then it'll get cropped auto or fitted however so i mean there's no reason that we can stop at just four points during the day we could add additional points if we really wanted to i don't Especially think we, if we make to, the but... files nice and small right i mean that's it's the well, that's i'm saying let's blow it up <laughs> and well it's we gotta, it we gotta fit day. it on the image right that's the yeah <laughs> yeah but no i i think four is fine i'm just saying that like it's not any kind of technical limitation that we're limited to four yeah we could do one that just shows just for like one minute at midnight. That's like, <laughs> it's just like a big, like beefy miracle smiley face. And you just see it for like a second. And like then it that, you know, 1237. <laughs> like, wait, yeah. what was that? <laughs> and that's, that's your warning that like you're, you're awake and it's too late. Yeah. Go to bed, please. You're, you're hallucinating. <laughs> okay. Um, All right, cool. But do you like the overall concept? Yeah, I think that's great. Work? Um, Do you have for, data for individual releases? Um, yes. So this is, I mean, this is generated. I have a script that generates this from a CSV file that actually has numbers per day. Um, and um, Smooge is a little bit worried about sharing that numbers per day file, even though I'm pretty, like, I, I don't think there's anything I can trace back to anybody on that. But um, historically, we've been careful about sharing that. Um, but... I mean, actually, if you get the S the like SVG of this, I'm pretty sure those lines directly correspond to the numbers. The numbers might actually even be embedded in the file. Um, but I, I think this we just kind of want um, the sizes per release. So I could get you like the maximum number for each release. Um, okay, that would work. Yeah, and the other thing that's imp I mean. I think this is fine for visualization. Like these numbers don't necessarily map directly to users or systems. They're just kind of an impression because um, you know there's a lot of factors that change. Like the, the new system is much better for uh, being reliable at actually counting individual systems. Um, which... Well, that's okay because I mean a light is lit. It could be a house with a family of five. It could be a house with yeah. one person in it. So right. in the same way, like lights on the earth yeah. are not any sort right. of. Yeah, th that makes sense. Oh. Okay, cool. I'm psyched about this idea. <laughs> All right. Well, now we have to come up with something for uh, F34. When can you get those those numbers, by the way? Because um, our due date is the 15th. Um, I Theoretically, whenever. Um, I used to have a spreadsheet with them in it. Then I switched to using the script-based thing. So it, it actually is ironically harder. Uh, uh, oh boy! But I mean, it is just in the CSV file. I can I can do it pretty quickly. Um, okay. It, yeah, I will either do it when I get a break between things now, or um, bug me about it next week. Um, and then I'll try and get it there. I mean, you can kind of get okay, a rough cool. idea from um, well this one, and then there's the other like per release graph as well. Which can I upload images here? Wouldn't that be awesome? Um, you got a screen share, but if you screen share it and then like, I can make it full screen and then take a screenshot of it and then upload it somewhere and post it to the chat, <laughs> or you could just screenshot it and post it to the chat. That's how I do things. Like I do online classes and I like take screenshots and I upload them because the online, I think we were using Zoom and like half the people couldn't see what the teacher was uploading. So, oh my gosh. What's going on here? I'm reprocessing here.
Need one of those fancy new Lenovo laptops so this is faster. A lot of them are sold out, you know, which is great because my daughter's Chromebook that she needs for school just died. So, yeah, stuff selling out everywhere. I guess as the school plans come out and parents are like, oh, yeah, I guess my kids aren't yeah. going to school. <laughs> I guess I will have to buy a laptop. Well, so as to not put you on the spot, let me open up uh, the F34 thing again. So um, here, I'm going to drop in the chat. Um, oh, thank you, Firefox, your new thing where you only select the last word of a URL. That's always what I want. <laughs> um, this is the per release thing here. Um, I can almost oh, eyeball, just eyeball the numbers from here, um, but I can also get you the actual peaks of that when I get a chance. Oh, that's kind of... It makes me think of one of those fancy um, uh, water fountains at like a casino or something. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> it, it almost looks like there's a pattern there. Uh, yeah, you, yeah. You can see how um, 8 and 20 kind of stand out here in this one here. So I was trying oh, to reflect yeah. that in the stacked one as well. Uh, that's where that came from. The 20 kind of looks wide. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. We, it's we the gap year. Exactly. Gap year release. I do like that trend upward though, man. That's nice. And you can see um, this has some of the data dinosaurs not taken out there with that weird pink spike near the end. Obviously, that's not real. Uh, and the reason the bars are so thick like that, like the um, is because on weekends it drops down. So if you zoom in on this, it is actually basically exactly on the week weekends and weekdays. So the new system doesn't have that because it actually aggregates the entire week into my number. Um, oh, so okay. It, uh, usually I just show the moving average graph of this because it also smooths that out. Um, but this, actually, this shows the peaks better. I feel like we could probably even just go off this graph. I mean, we could just eyeball it enough, right? No one's going to count every light. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. You know, I, I and, and, to, and to get variation, you might have to like do something different anyway. I mean, what's the difference between 100,000 lights and 120,000 lights? Maybe it's visible. Yeah. I'm not sure. As long as they're like the scale relative to each other has some sense, I, I don't think it matters beyond that. And we may find if we plug it in and we put like 10,000 lights or 100,000 lights or whatever, like, oh, that's way too much. So then we'll just use some kind of factor to tone it down. Yeah. But it'll be nice to be able to say it's based on the real numbers. Though. Right, yeah. right, exactly. So and then in the future, if you want to light it up even more, download, get all your friends. <laughs> it's just a pure 255, 255, 255 image. Everything is washed out. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much, Matthew. That was yeah, very helpful. Yeah, sure. This is a great idea. I um, am looking forward to the results. Yeah. All right. I'm going to jump off to see the end of another session. All right. See ya. All right. So can we do this again for F34 just as quickly? That would be nice. <laughs> um, yeah. So, oh, I'm not sharing anymore. Hold on. Got to share again. Um, oh, we have chat comments too. Oh, I have the supply chain of the laptops. Yeah, you know, I had a webcam on order. I ordered it. I ordered it the first week of March because I figured things were going to get bad, and it kept getting delayed. It kept getting delayed, and then they said it like wasn't going to show up till November. So yeah, you can't even buy a webcam anymore. Okay, why is this not letting me? Okay. Mm. All right. So F34. Okay. Yes. So the multiplane camera, it's actually, um, I think, is there, there's a picture of him here and I think Madeline put it together something too, but I don't have it handy. Um, basically Marie, all it is like, it sounds way more complicated than it is. 
he just had different platforms like this, this, this all the way up, almost like a ladder, but flat. And then the camera pointed down through all the layers. So you okay. know how they do like cell animation yep. on like those yep. transparencies. So there'd be a different cell on each platter. I got you. And yeah. then, so like they could move. And I think they, uh, I think this was like the pioneering thing for like uh, Snow White, like the original. And uh, you know, like the background based on how deep the background was supposed to be, it would move at a different rate. So like if the bushes in the background were closer to Snow White and then the trees and the forest in the background were way far away, the way far away stuff wouldn't move quite as much, but the bushes would move faster. So it let you sort of make that, um, yep. what is the name? There's a name for it. It's like parallax. Parallax, that's it. it. So you could parallax stuff with the hand-drawn animation. So that's really all it is. It was just like a super tall camera with multiple planes on it. And, yeah, and then I think um, at some point they also occasionally compressed them so they could do like zoom shots where background elements wouldn't get as large or something like that. Yeah, so you could probably like screw it or something so that they came closer yeah, together. Yeah, they like or shifted like or something. And then Mickey Mouse was always in the foreground. <laughs> yes, of course. Did they actually put Mickey Mouse in the patent? Because that would be amazing. It doesn't look like no, that. no, they did not. <laughs> that would be such a great technicality. Like, oh, he's in your patent. Sorry, man. Now this is not animate that one day night because that's the idea for the for the current one, and that would be like kind of repeating, but probably just some. I, I have no idea if a landscape or a picture or whatever, but it's slightly moving. I mean, I, I even have that as a parallax on my website, and I just place a solid background and then an SVG on top. And when you scroll just a tiny bit, it seems that it moves. It is actually just a really 2% zooming effect. So that would be interesting. I don't know how complicated. Yeah, the only thing is we don't have access to like change the code to do that sort of stuff. So we're kind of limited with the framework that's already there. I mean, yeah. I mean, maybe we could bribe somebody or whatever, but we don't. We don't even really have the time to do it, unfortunately, just because we're doing I know two someone at once. who has cake, fresh cake from yesterday. Maybe <laughs> I have cake, yes, but not time. <laughs> I'm negative on time right now. Plenty of cake. Could be just a fake feeling, a <laughs> simpler transition between two solid I images. I'm, so I guess. I know you were like kind of focusing on like the technology behind it, but I'm kind of focusing on the visual effect that um, it was able to create. So like thinking about having like the soft kind of um, almost watercolor type of a background and then having these types of objects on top that are a little bit flatter. Um, and kind of having uh, some kind of in-between layers, right? So something in-between really soft and kind of artistic and something a bit more graphic. So that's kind of when, I, when I'm when i looking at this and the, 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 I just Googled multi-plane camera and, you know, it's talking about, it's giving a couple examples, it's talking about Snow White, it's talking about, and that when I think about, those old animations i just i'm marveling at like the beauty of the backgrounds and the artwork that goes into them and then how they do the animation over that and somehow the two styles actually really work together so um that's that was kind of my thought, first thought when i saw yeah well i'm wondering if we could do something see the problem is like you know, nice watercolor background and then like beefy miracle. <laughs> there's a little bit of contrast there. Well, right. Um, I think there's an artistic way to do this and I could be the one yeah. to pursue this um, yes. This idea. That would be awesome. <laughs> I mean, we, we're all kind of taking a stab at different things, but if this is the right. idea that came to me, I'm ready for it. Okay, so do you like the idea of bringing in sort of the, the Fedora characters? Like the, yeah, the we beefy try that. and the badger and the panda and maybe, I don't know, I mean, are there other ones we have? So now I'm starting to think about like how Disney, <laughs> not the most favoritist company in the world, but anyway, Disney, no. <laughs> um, 
they kind of take their um, their older characters and they they've started doing them in different styles, like offering books or art prints or whatever it might be. So it could be the kind of thing where we do, and I have the background and the skills to do this kind of sketch. It could be looking like a sort of an animated sketch, like an animation sketch of the badger, of the panda, et cetera, et cetera. And it could be like have that slightly more artistic look to it, but I'm afraid for it to go too far like towards a Disney vibe. So like, I have a, yeah. I have an idea though. Okay. So with the transitions, it could start off the background is this. I have no idea if this will work, but the background <laughs> is the pencil sketch. Yeah. Right. And then the characters are sort of like you have like the circle and like the perspective lines, and they're like a sketch. And then yep. later on in the morning, you know, maybe they're inked. And then you know the sunset one you have like a little bit of color coming in and then at midnight it's like full blast i like it. i feel like with the way the transitions work it would like slowly come in and it might actually work and not look crazy the same okay. with the lights because you're adding you're not taking away or moving you could also I'm down fill, to in, try it. fill in the colors of the background so you could have like the bushes on layer two and the tree on layer three. And then all of a sudden they're like, you know, there's a base paint and then there's like some defining lines, kind of like the ink, you could have like even color come in. That might be a little bit wild for a background. Like, you know, I like the, I like the idea of it building through the day. Yeah, but it could, it could fill. Yeah, maybe starting the color. Cause I think that the black and white is gonna be very stark and high contrast. So yeah, it might be good to have. I wasn't. It might be good to have the pencil either. sketch. Oh okay. So like have I the have pencil ideas, sketch but... and like very pale colors. Yeah. Oh, you run with it. But like, yeah, that was something I was thinking we could use that well, time of day. I stuff kind for. of like the um. I I like the aesthetic of the thing that Kyle put in here already. That kind like of the, like the white on the blue kind of yeah. And I was that was kind, kind of, of my kind thought. Of blue printy. Yeah, that was kind of my okay. thought for for the at least for the sketch how that would kind of work with the coloring um i think it needs some exploration <laughs> like i gotta take out some pencils and uh some markers and stuff and like try things all right but like as a concept can we hold on let me um i just wanted to share this <laughs> oh no wrong one ah there we go yep yeah th th this is like the style i was thinking that like Same. where you have all the yeah so um i'm wondering like, is there a way we so can also cute, tie you guys <laughs> is there a way we could tie it to the data somehow data for something anything i don't know um well I mean, you could have the background elements be like a graph. I mean, that's kind of how we got away with the Fedora 26 thing being like the sound wave, right? It was, you know, you could you could have, I mean, I don't know what it would look like, but you could, you could mirror, and this is a more simplistic version than maybe you do, but the graph that was in Matthew's presentation, just kind of like the increasing Fedora could be a bush here and, you know, a tree top here and something else somewhere else. That's an overly simplistic version, but you could probably hide a graph in the environment. Garrett in the in the session chat is saying the data could become the landscape, which is, I think, a similar idea. Yeah. Scribble at the beginning and adding in grass trees. Beefy's not good with numbers, so he can't <laughs> keep it to the background. <laughs> yeah, and then, um, oh, you know, I, depending like how crazy we want to get with the characters, I was just thinking we have like an extended family of characters too, because we have the Dan Walsh, three little piggies from the container coloring book. And we have the container commando characters. We have the cat and the dog from the SE Linux coloring book. And we have another coloring book coming up that my intern Madeline's working on. It's a snow white based one for Kubernetes. So we have like a whole extended family and they all, it's kind of interesting because this is sort of inspired by a Disney guy 
that some of them, I mean, there was a Three Little Pigs Disney cartoon and certainly Snow White was a thing for Disney. And um, we kind of so, take some of the fairy tales for technical concepts. I have one, I have one thought to put in here is that if it gets too cartoony, we're going to get some criticism. Oh, yeah. We will get criticism. That's all right. So. <laughs> we'll get it no matter what. So, I mean. Listen, I, feel I like loved, I love the newest wallpaper. Like, I think it's great. Clearly other people. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so but you're right. They just, like, don't get it. Like, they don't get, like, the but reference. I think that there's, like, a whole Whatever. group of people. Just from where I work with badges, there's a whole group of people who are like, well, that's just for fun. And, you know, they want to consider themselves all, like, serious. And I'm a hacker. I don't know. Like, there's people. Yeah, but it's totally for the hacker culture. Like, you know, it's it's almost, it's, like, inspired by, like, Ready Player One or, like, you know, like, the old right. school, you know, Right. bit artwork and it's like wow that just went straight over your head didn't it all right <laughs> <laughs> but it's you know it i might think it's all nice. right i think it might be nice for me to also get pull some inspiration from something like miyazaki or some anime um yeah. that might actually play with our crowd a little bit more yeah definitely um, yeah if you did all of our characters in like the anime chibi style people would lose it like they would yeah. just love that and even though it's like you know, characters and cartoons. Uh, there's always going right. to be like the grumps. Okay, whatever. But everybody else will love it. We already have comments like anime, Ghibli, anime rocks. Yeah. yeah. So I think a an anime look maybe or a, yeah, like I'm real, like Studio Ghibli has that watercolor and the, that, you know, uses that same style. So yeah. Yeah, and I think, honestly, I think that's good, too, because it distances from Disney. Like, yes, the animator was a Disney person, but also Disney is, like, the antithesis of what Fedora is all about in terms of sharing and whatnot. So it's good to have a little bit of, you know, yes, cool invention, bro, but, you know, we right. have other ideas about how we license things. Yeah. Right. Um, cool. And so I like his idea. I was just going to say, in some ways, Disney is no longer carrying the mantle of, like, hand-drawn animation. Very true. Right. Very true. Okay. Did anyone see Mary and the Witch's Flower? Mm. Okay, well, if you have Netflix and you're in the U.S., I'm not sure, Mary, if you'll have it, but uh, it's an animated film made by one of the animator animators who was in Miyazaki studio. So he has okay. left and started a new studio. So it has like very much the same look and feel. And it's such a cute little adventure. I think you could probably show your eldest daughter, Ms. Mo. I mean, maybe pre-watch it, but um, yeah, it's very, very cute. Anyway, just had to throw that in there. Um, um, I want, just to put another, hold on, I'm going to open it up. Another Disney alternative to, and like, I'm a crazy, like, Irish person, and that's fine. So just, I'll show it to you and just humor me. Um, there's this studio, because Ireland has, like, a strong tradition of animation because um, of tax laws. Uh, Don Bluth opened his animation studio there. He used to be Disney, and he's the guy who did, like, the Five Old American Tale stuff. Um, and I guess they continued the tax breaks and whatever. So, cause they, they started up all these schools for animators to study how to be an animator so that they could work at Don Blue studio. And then his studio folded and they opened up all these studios. So one of the studios is cartoon saloon and they have like a really neat, it's sort of unique. Like it's, it's clearly inspired by Miyazaki, but they also kind of take Celtic, um, like book of Kells type stuff. And they, they bring those elements into it. Which makes it like really unique. If you've ever Did seen they do this, the is Secret from, of Kells or whatever. Is yes, movie? the Secret of Kells, and I love the visuals in that. It's like I so love crazy. That like, one. oh my gosh, yeah. It's great. And then this one is the um, Song of the Sea. Um, and it's about like a selkie. It's like I a mermaid, but a it. seal instead of a mermaid. It's great. Yeah, and and they have a new one that's coming out that apparently. Um, it's the, the Wolf Walkers. It's about, I think it's actually about Salem, Massachusetts. It's these um, people that are like pilgrims that are like hunting in the woods or something. I don't really know. But there's like wolves that possess these these natives or whatever. It's kind of neat. Um, 
that one is actually coming out and Apple picked up the rights to it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just another style. They, they do Puff and Rock too. If you've seen that, that's on Netflix. But I just, I don't know. I, I like their style. It's like definitely, it's not, it's not just plain anime. It's like, I don't know. It has a little bit of something else to it. So just pointing that out. <laughs> oh my gosh. I was just grabbing a trailer for this one that I was talking about, Marion Witch's Art. And like the opening shot is like, that's the style we should do. That's so cute. Let me see if I can do it. She's got that feisty little face, but the that quick sketch is just perfect. Oh wow. <laughs> but anyway, this is the trailer for the one I was just talking about. Super cute movie. Definitely watch it. And it is on Netflix. Very times. cool. All right. And then I think, oh, one idea that I had for the data aspect. Um, so F33 is going to be about the actual sort of like downloads or IP addresses or whatever. So that's like um, how Fedora itself is being consumed. It might be neat for 34, especially because it's like a character focused design that it could be focused on data around the users, maybe. Like maybe how many contributors we get over time or I, I don't even know like how many contributors for some release that was recent or something like that rather than over time. So I don't know. I, I think we should play around a I'm little thinking, bit with ideas. Like, I'm thinking about like frames per second, right? Like how can we equate like the idea of like frames per second to something in Fedora? I don't know. What about okay. like the, um, I'm thinking about like some of the videos that we made. The first one that comes to mind is the one we made at Flock in Budapest, which is like a really awesome video. But I don't know if there's you any way it. to take take it and interpret it. Yeah, I, I can get it on YouTube. Hold on. Okay. I've probably seen it, but I can't visualize it. I honestly cried when I saw it the first time, you guys. I'm such a mush. <laughs> I seriously am. It's fine. <laughs> All right, hold on. Here is. Okay, let's see. Oh, Ghost in the Shell is pretty rad. I'm not sure if I've seen this one. Oh my gosh. Well, you must. I was I not like in Budapest. It. It's okay. It's still a great one. Can you hear sound on it, Mismo? I can turn it on. Whoa. Okay. Can you guys hear it? No. Uh, That's fine. I'll watch it later that when people have the in there. Oh yeah, I've seen this. I've seen this. Yeah. And is it it's people saying hi in their native languages? And saying we are fedora, or saying um, I'm from, maybe Maria could explain she did the project. Tatika. <laughs> Tatika, can you just explain what they were saying again? Um, it, it was, um, uh, hello, my name is whatever the name. I'm from X country and I'm fedora. That's awesome. Um, I had an idea for the wallpaper um, inspiration. So uh, I don't know if you guys have heard of the game Chris. Um, G -R -I -S. Uh, it's a really, uh, I only played it because it was really beautiful and it has a um, watercolor aesthetic. And so, this is a kind of like it has a lot of layers so i think that could also work since the multiplane animation thing also focused on different layers uh, that they had i love this style 
It's beautiful. Yeah. yeah it's, it looks, even the it looks technical too. Yeah, because of the shapes. It's very like geometrical. Can you post a link? I don't know. Oh, what is it? Gris? The art of the Gris. game? So it's called Gris, to your honest. And the game is really, um, really, I would say aesthetic overall. So if anyone gets a chance to play, they should. <laughs> Awesome. I love this. Okay, we have Chris players. Um. Oh, I have a switch. I should get that. I have a switch too. Well, my kid does. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, it was like intuition. I ordered a switch week before COVID isolation. Oh. It was amazing. Now they're all gone for sure. Yeah. Yo, I ordered it for my daughter's birthday, like well before, and they canceled the order. And so I had to buy it basically. I, I bought a scalped one. And the thing that really kicked me is I, I had bought it from GameStop. I had ordered it from there. And the one that I bought that was scalped was from GameStop. The guy didn't even open up the GameStop box, he just <laughs> like put another label on top. I'm like, great. So, all right. It's the but same exact At thing. least she got a birthday present. It's like a week before a kid's birthday, you find out it's not coming, and it's like, oh, my God. Right. Totally. How old is that? That's, I'm guessing it's for your oldest one, right? Yeah, she's seven. That was her seventh seven. birthday. So. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I know. I know. I wonder when she was born. And I just, I just got her the subscription because she plays. Her best friend got one for his birthday, too, and they do Mario Kart because he's like a crazy Mario-aholic. And they were playing video chatting and like they would load up the same level and play because we couldn't figure out how the multiplayer worked. It doesn't actually tell you you need to buy a subscription to make it work. It just hides the button, which great. I you know I thought Nintendo was better than that, but that's okay. So she has the subscription now and they actually play it together for real. <laughs> Maybe it's because they I mean, don't want kids just randomly subscribing to stuff. Well, I mean, it could at least say something like, you know, tell your parent. I mean, they do have very good parental control type stuff. Like they have like this long ID number that you need to to pass to the other person. And it's like very, it, it would be very hard for a kid to like meet some random weirdo, which is great. But right, just let yeah, me know definitely. I have to pay. Because <laughs> we didn't know, like we just assumed the game wouldn't do it. So, right. Anyway. Anyway. Cool. So lots of different styles here. I'm loving this yeah. first style. This is just beautiful. Yeah, and I'm wondering how we can bring in sort of the I Am Fedora stuff to it. Like maybe what we could do, I'm just thinking like, it, it sounds like we're gonna do something that's maybe <laughs> in the woods or like, you know, nature, a nature driven background. So it might be neat to have that background represent sort of where Fedora contributors are from, you know, like native plants or trees or flowers or something like representing sort of the population of our contributors. I like it. I, I don't like know it. how obvious it would be, though, but maybe it doesn't have to be too obvious. Yeah, I think F26, like Fedora word thing come out. Was it in like a magazine article or something at some point? I don't remember, but that's definitely something where you wouldn't know it. But then somebody pointed no. out to you and you'd be like, yeah. snap, I get it. Kind of like the FedEx logo arrow. Right. Whereas something like this, where it's the different trees, it's a little bit more like you have to think about, oh, like, I don't know. I'm a nerd about trees and like what kind of tree that is. But I think most people are just like, it's a tree. I don't know. Where's that tree from? I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, I'm a nerd so, about trees, but like spiritually. So I like don't <laughs> care what kind of tree it is. I'm just like, man, that's a beautiful tree and I'm drawn to it. That's all I got. All right. Sorry for the interruption. No, it's all good. I love, you know, bean trees with like the big long, they're a native to America. They're, they're amazing. There's somebody down the street. Cause you, it's not like a tree you could like go to the nursery and buy. Like they're just like this really ancient native American tree. And it's just, it's spectacular is the only way I could describe it. It's just like this massive canopy and um, it has like these big long bean pod things, which is why they call it a bean tree. I mean, it has a real name. I don't know what the real name is, but it's a bean tree. They're very cool. Uh, that Gris game artwork reminded me of Steven Universe artwork, which is also super cool. 
and has a really interesting wow. style to it. Um, it kind of has like this artsy, I mean, it mixes different styles all together is one of the things I like about it. But this one's interesting. We were just talking about <clears throat> plant life, etc. Well, I like how that has like the sculpture and the mountain yeah. face. Yeah, yeah, that was gorgeous. We could do something with that. <laughs> panda. Ancient panda. <laughs> well, I was thinking of um a nice style. Let me see if I can find what I was looking for. Here it is in the daytime. Oh, that's neat. I love this little, oh, it's animated, that's adorable. It reminds me of the wallpaper, the watercolor with the trees and the reflection. Yes, it does. Ooh. It's gorgeous. And I carried away. Here we go. So um, this is the uh, is the part of the storyline of Song of the Sea, and see they built the guy is in the cliff face. So it's actually based on like an old, a very old, ancient whatever um, story about the face of the island like looked like a man that was sad and weeping so like there's a story about how the man cried so much that it created the sea and because he had such a sorrow because something terrible happened and whatever that's part of the storyline is there i think kind of part of the storyline of the whole movie is like they rescued this guy's soul and he's freed from the rock which is neat but yeah i think like if we could have some sort of mountain sort of cliff face thing that could be like one way to represent stuff Sort of conceptually, it might be neat. Now I'm thinking about Moana. Back yeah, to yeah, the Moana mountain. Back to Disney. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also like it's something where you could have you could have some sort of narrative there. I don't know if we're like trying to inject too much into it, but I just I like it to have some concept. Like like relating to the invention is good. Having beefy miracle in there is absolutely awesome. But having some sort of like deeper significance is definitely like something I'd like to see. So I'm trying to think about are there narratives there or how can we connect it to our contributors? Um, I don't know. I think there's a certain amount of like nostalgia that people see when they when they see those characters. I feel yeah. like if the characters are in there, I'm not sure you need like much more than that except for it to be well designed and we have tons of inspiration that we've um, pulled up during this. Right. So I'm, you know, not... I, I'm wondering, I'm wondering if there's like an example of something where it shows, cause like the ones that we've looked at is all like, there's different scenes that like, you know, each have their own thing, but I'm wondering, could we do something where it's a transition like across different modes so that, you know, like 
like it's like a scene like i've seen i've seen illustrations where like the background will be sliced into four quarters and the, like one slice is winter one slice is fall one it's is spring one is summer yeah. something like that where it's sliced into something but then each thing it's sliced into represents a part of the community and you know it could be like the geographic region they're from or it could be like the type of contributions they make. So maybe like they're sort of like the coder slice and maybe that's very geometric, like the crisp artwork. And then maybe there's another slice that's sort of like designers and like a slice for um, like docs or marketing and then a slice for QA or that kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? So it's like the different slices could represent the pieces of the community and it, those sort of like neat transition backgrounds are kind of neat too but maybe it's just throwing too much in the pot just sort of one yeah. way to i think just jot it down yeah. and when i'm sketching it'll give me plenty of different areas or ways to go down yeah okay. it could Sometimes. be the four f's as well oh yeah that could do if we use four characters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so like what's how beefy? You, yeah. And like how you, yeah, how you use the characters will be interesting too. Cause I think like, depending on the art style, right? Like, like beefy could be like a very, very, very small, you know, figure that could be discerned if you wanted to, but it could just be something in a landscape. And then it's just another one of those things that you point out, you know, like beefy is inherently oh. ridiculous, but, but like I less know. ridiculous based on the inter, you know, how, how the scene is framed and things like that. What the art style is. I have a challenge for us. Let's make an artistic beefy miracle. <laughs> I have one idea actually, and it might make it, it might make it more, um, I don't know, more wallpapery. Uh -huh. um, if you guys know like those hidden pictures things, like yes. of course I have kids, so like Highlights Magazine. So it kind of blends into the background, but it's sort of like the backwards, like it's the exact opposite of what Oop iWorks Invention does. But I mean, if they're like a different, like if you have the watercolor background and then you have the actual drawn characters that are just sort of like sliced into it. That might be neat too. And they wouldn't stand out as much. So you'd have less contrast, which is good for a desktop background, but then like they'd still kind of be worked into it. Like beefy miracle is like in the bark of a tree or something like he's the face. Right. I right. I like that idea too. So I think, um, I think we have enough ideas. So I'm just gonna, yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna say it. Um, and <laughs> we have even more from, the um, chat, someone saying a silhouette. Geometry plus plus. How about having multiple characters embedded within an element instead of a single character? I'm not sure what you mean, Sayak. Um, they would, people want to see the old sad king happier if we went in that direction. <laughs> Uh, I need a pencil sharpener. I'll be back. And we're getting a response that um, someone likes to find out when there's a meaning behind some piece of art. So that's cool. Some positive feedback. <clears throat> I think I have plenty to sketch on. And this is for 34, right? When's this yeah, one? Yeah, that's 34. When's They're this both, one I mean... It, we, it's good to have something by the 15th for both because we're trying to do them both at the same time. But like, oh, it's definitely cool. more pressing for F33 because that's the actual deadline for F33. So are they doing them early or? We're trying to get ahead of release and then we'll be ahead. So like, this is sort of like the catch up one where we're doing two at once and then moving forward will always be a release ahead. So I don't know. I plan to take it particularly easy next week. This week was really okay. intense. So yeah. um, I actually think that sketching is something that helps me take it easy. And All it's right. sort of related to work. So <laughs> I'm working. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I think I can uh, do some of this next during the week and get it uploaded. And my thought is I'm just going to go in, do some sketching, 
if people want or feel inspired to like maybe make landscape backgrounds, uh, make that kind of like do watercolor at home, like whatever um, piece, because I have a feeling we're going to end up mishmashing like a whole bunch of stuff together. So there's definitely no rule that I have to be making all the pieces. What's up? And how um, how are we changing it over time again? I forgot that part. Are we um, changing it over we, time? Are we shifting we, things? I'd say we're already trying to do that for the other one. Let's just attempt to get something going. And I think it'll evolve from there because I think there's too many ideas to settle on like how that evolution would happen. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, well, let's see. So what I am going to do right now is I'm going to um, document in the tickets for both of these, the discussions we had. And what time do we have? All right, so we have half an hour left. So, I mean, we have half an hour to do sketches. Maybe we could get some sketches posted too. I is there a way to like... Wait, I kind of want to take a screenshot of our lovely okay. faces. Hold on. My screenshot shortcut was not working all right ready <laughs> tatika i know really, did you have crazy i gotta look at the screenshot you're making crazy eyes that was hilarious yes yes they were a part of that do you do you care to try again or is that your your go-to no yep that's it all right <laughs> <laughs> nice um awesome thanks mo for taking the notes and putting them on the sure the thing there i think i'm gonna try to hit some of the other sessions and then take a rest before the social hour sessions start up but this was really awesome cool so I, I feel very you. productive <laughs> i'll see you guys soon bye hopefully <laughs> So do we want to just take the rest of the time and sketch or do you guys want to just head off? That's either way. I'm cool. <laughs> yeah. What, yeah. Whatever. Which um, you were thinking, you were thinking of sketching for 34. Oh, uh, yeah. Or even 33. I mean, we need both. 33 is the one I guess with more of the deadline on it. Mm-hmm. Well, let me, I'll, I'll take the time anyway um, to document the notes that I wrote down. If, is this them? This is them. Okay. I'm going to write them right now. That's just me reposting the tickets. So if anyone wants to throw a sketch into there, that might be an easier place for them to kind of to all be in one place. Yeah, that would be awesome. I like keeping the tickets as sort of like the main thing because it's just like one stop shop for everything on the wallpaper. And I guess this is being recorded, so I guess we could always post the recording afterwards with all my uh, smiling about in the beginning. That'll be awesome. <laughs> Maybe I can edit that out. You just Yeah, you just cut it. <laughs> Well, it's not like we had access as speakers to like see how this worked ahead of time. So, I mean, I I, I wonder if every talk is like that. Like, oh, what am I what am I doing here? I'm going to go take a break. Um, it was really nice meeting you. Oh, yeah. Really yeah. nice to meet you as well. It, I had a question for you. Is your Was your yeah. session from yesterday recorded? 
Um, yeah, I think all sessions are recorded. Okay, so I'll be able to. I, I missed it so. yesterday, but I wanted to see it. So <laughs> I'll try to find a way to watch it on the platform. Yeah. Thank you so much. No problem. Bye bye. 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 And if anybody in the chat is really excellent at Blender, please feel free to design the earth and populate it with lights. <laughs> <laughs> we need to get uh, Micah. He's really awesome at that stuff. Yeah. He okay. makes like really cool materials. He could probably do like that ozone glow thing really yeah. easily. Yeah. 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 And Sylvia, I don't think, I don't know that like it's tied to Blender. I think honestly, I was just playing around with it. So if you look in the ticket on 33, I was just like, oh, cool. This guy did telephone poles. I'm going to build a telephone pole to kind of like learn Blender better. So I don't know right, that right. It's, it's, it's tied to Blender specifically. That's just what I was doing kind of to learn. Um, oh, yeah. No, but it would look really nice if it was Blender. And we sort of have been picking up Blender. I mean, every now and yeah. then we'll not do Blender, but, you know, it's it's an amazing tool for this stuff. Yeah, I mean, particularly and it's nice because. Oh, go for it. No, just 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 like I'm, I'm well, we might be thinking different things. I'm thinking just populating like 100,000 lights is not something I want to do with pointillism. Right. I like want to, you know, click the button yeah. and say put lights over this continent or whatever. Right, right. And then if it's in Blender and you have the scene constructed there and like we decide how that angle doesn't work, you can just kind of move the angle. Whereas if it's something that we sort of did in Inkscape or something like that, it's like, oh, I have to redraw all this. Right. <laughs> yeah. Particularly if we do the like the um, the the four views, like picking like which lights should be lit up at any given time and how bright should they be? Are we, you know, it'll just make it a little bit easier to make those decisions after the fact. The learning curve is not only steep for you, Sylvia, it's also steep for me. <laughs> it's not as bad as it used to be, though. No, the, so, actually, yeah. when I started getting into it, it was the 2.8 tutorials because the, the user interface was a lot easier, more sensible, at least yeah. in my brain. Yeah, the old one was not good. I started learning on the old one, so when the new one came out, it was just much easier. Yeah, I tried and gave up. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to post um, the image Tatika shared if I can find it again. Where did it go? Here it is. Okay. Oh, he actually gave a full link to that data, didn't he? I have to find that now. I have oh, like yeah. 30 tabs open. It was, I probably can post it back in the chat here. Oh, that'd be handy if you got it. Yeah, there's the Imgur link right there. That's the- uh, oh, you, say, you say Imgur. <laughs> Imgur, 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 I, I say, it's probably Imgur. I say Imgur. Imgur. I say image UR, like image <laughs> URL, but yeah, who knows what it's supposed to be. GIF or GIF, you know? Yeah, well, no, it's it's clearly GIF. <laughs> I agree on this point. <laughs> well, it, if it's GNOME, it's GIF. It's just, it's just how it has to be. And I know it's GNOME, so. Okay, so we have the data, we have the sample wallpaper, I have the narrative. Was there anything else? I don't think so. Oh, I guess the other note was just uh, with the lights. We need to make sure the contrast is appropriate for a desktop wallpaper. Okay. So the shiny new comment notes is in 33. Now I'm going to hit 34. Okay, so concept five three four.
I don't know what to call these cartoon guys. They're like, I don't know that they're historical, but they are historical. We'll just uh, feature fedora characters. Well loved, yeah. beloved. Yeah. We will feature beloved fedora characters such as Beefy Miracle, and I know we're going to get complaints about that because Beefy Miracle is offensive somehow. Um, Panda, Badger. Were there other ones? Um, oh yeah, and if we need if we need more, the extended family from the coloring books. Three little pigs, container, commandos, dog, cat, and snow. White and the Kubernetes dwarves. Okay, these characters will be done in an anime style. Or, uh, how about this? Will be done in a style influenced by Miyazaki of the Chris video game illustrations. Um. Mary and the Witch's Flower, Cartoon Saloon, and the Steven Universe. Um, the background will be multi layered as a connection to Oob's uh, multi plane camera. A watercolor style, heavy on the nature, maybe rocks with characters or symbols embedded in them, trees, maybe with faces, um, plants, etc. And then the characters can be very obviously on top of the background. Or if we want them lower contrast, we can embed them in the scene. Bella highlights hidden pictures, puzzles. Um, one idea for the background is to split it into quarters or some other fraction and have each quarter influenced by a discipline or region of Fedora contributors. For example, a developer's quarter that is more geometrical in contrast to, say, a designer's quarter. Was there anything else? I don't think so. I think that was that. Yeah, Frank in the chat is. I think. I think I'd say that as well. But like, uh, influenced by the four Fs could be the the quad. Oh, so yep, yep, yep. Would be an idea, um, which is a good one. I think. Yeah, I think that's everything. There were there were like a lot of different ideas for that one, so it'll be interesting to yeah. see how that one turns out. So I'm gonna write at the bottom. We're heavy on the ideas for this one, so some of this will be shaken out as sketches, visuals are put together. Uh, Marie said she's happy to take point on this one, so I'll assign it to her. And she also sounded like she was open to send me backgrounds and things, you know, if people were going to do that. Yeah. She can focus on the character design. And um, we'd like a variety of contributors to work on background concepts and submit them here. How about that? Sounds great. Okay, cool. And yeah, I think that's good. So I'll post that. So there, now we have notes. So we actually did something. There's a record of it. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's pretty cool. All right. Very exciting. All right. So I'm probably going to head out because, um, 
yeah i mean i i feel like we got a ton done this was a great idea mm -hmm. yeah no no worries if you showed up late thanks for coming and honestly like i this platform is cool and, and there's like other platforms we could use too i mean we could do this sort of meeting on a regular basis nest or flock doesn't have to be happening for us to meet up like this i feel like you know in the span of honestly it was more like an hour and a half we worked through ideas that normally asynchronously probably would have taken us three or four weeks to do. So, I mean, it kind of takes a load of stress off too to kind of have that stuff mm -hmm. worked out so quickly. Yeah, yeah, there, yeah, there's a focus. I, I can say like, uh, that's always sometimes the challenging thing on the asynchronous forums is like, what does anyone think of this? <laughs> right, well, it's like you put it out there and it's like you don't hear back and you're like, oh God, was a terrible idea or what? And it, you know, it's just async kind of sucks sometimes. Sometimes it's a great record, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing. It's good at self-documenting. So. All right. Well, I'm gonna head out. Thanks, guys. Sounds good. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs>